Hello and welcome back to the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. It is free day number five, I think. It is one of our free days. Yeah, a lot of bonding points to use, actually. Oh, wow, we can use bond with pretty much everyone, except for Fee, Machius. So, so we have four. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Oh, we can, even, we can do even do it with Millium. Oh, she's still in the dormitory. I don't know. We're level 40. We're up there in level now, finally. Alright, let's look at the quests. Oh, we're... Battle. Oh, chapter 5. Okay, so we need to go to the... Student Union. Marcus is probably actually... Oh, that's right. Marcus has that chess match today. Our match with the upper classroom chest is starting soon. We've done all we can to prepare. Now we just need to go all out. We've got this, Machius. And what's your name? Stefan. Steven? Steven or Stefan, not however to sure. Oh, hello? This is the quest. Yeah, could we talk to her before? Actually, can I just do it from here? Yeah, we can. Heh <laughs> Welcome to the Occult Research Society. What kind of fortune would you like me to tell you today? Reign of Class 7? Health, romance, I can give every life advice. I can give, I can even give life advice, if that is what you wish. So I'm not actually here to get my fortune told. <laughs> don't worry, I'm well aware of that. You were sent by the student council, weren't you? You could have at least played along a little, though. You're not much fun. I'm kind of fun. Girl's a strange one, all right. She's got quite the reputation amongst the girls as an uncannily accurate fortune teller, though. <laughs> There's something you'd like to ask of me, is there not? Answers are merely a question away. Do you know what kinds of rituals and curses are my favorites, perhaps? Nope. That's probably the kind of thing where I'm better off not knowing things. Wait. She didn't just read around my, read around my did she? Huh. Nah, she couldn't have. <laughs> so I assume you've been informed on what I want you to do. Yeah, you want me to look into the Academy of Seven Mysteries, right? Precisely. The sooner you can start investigating, the better, the better. Are you ready to begin? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Sure, I'm ready when you are. I know a lot of schools across the country have mysteries like these, but I didn't know that Thor's had a set of all, set all of its own. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could give you the good news. They've become a hot topic among, amongst the girls, some of the girls recently. Hmm. I wouldn't have guessed that. But you said that you wanted me to look into the seven mysteries? Does that mean you don't know what all of them are and want me to find out what you don't want, don't know about? No, I know the basics of each mystery already. But I'd like some like you to ask, like to ask you to do is to investigate how credible each one is. I see. Is that something I'll be really able to investigate though? I mean, if they're supernatural? You can just think of it as part of your investigation. If you can't come to an inclusion, so be it. Either way, to be more, be more specific, I'd like you to talk to the people most likely to know something about each mystery. I could do it myself, but I'm not exactly what you could call a people person. <laughs> I never would have known. Right, okay. I think I get what you want me to do now. Can you give me a head start by telling me what you know about each one of the seven mysteries, though? Hmm, I think if I told you everything at once, it might be so much whole horror to take in that it may stop your heart. Trust me about the one by one and I'll tell you what to know about each. That sounds like a good way to do it. Alright, leave me the investigation to me. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to hearing what you go. Well, let us go. Maybe I need to talk to Bear a little bit more. Because I don't really know where to do, even where to start, so. Let's see, can I talk to her a little bit more? Uh, first one. Oh, the first mystery, the crying sculpture. 
The sculpture in question rests in the art room. It used to as a reference for sketches. However, if you dare draw near, you can hear you can see tear tracks running down its face. Whoa. Once more, the tears return after wiping them away. Rumor has it that the tears originate from a human head contained within. Okay, I was on a, I was on board up until then. That's a little too extreme to believe. Heh, <laughs> you think so too. Even so, these sorts of missed stories always contain some kernel of truth. Perhaps speaking to the head of the art club will allow you to find it. Okay, second. The second mystery is that the haunted piano. One late night, a student walked by the music room, heard someone playing the piano. Drawn by the sound, she took a peek into the room, only to find it empty. Old name certainly fits. They claim it's a music-loving ghost playing the piano out there. No, it's just a self-playing piano, because there are some pianos that do that. Ghost who likes music, that's all. That's all? Seems a bit lazy to me. Agreed. At least give the ghost some some elaborate, tragic backstory to explain its connection to the piano. Regardless, perhaps you could learn... <sighs> Sorry. Heard, learn more from the head of the wind orchestra. I believe his name is Highbell. Third. Third, we have the mystery of the Forbidden Tome. Now, this one is interesting. Apparently, the Academy's library houses a book, a book containing one of the world's greatest secrets. The book is passed down from one library to the next, all of whom are tasked with keeping it safe from prying eyes. You weren't kidding, this one is pretty interesting. And it pleases me to know that I have a partner in fascination. Just imagine if it were something about the fall of the ancient Zimmerian civilization. <laughs> How romantic. The person currently in charge of the library, the, the library is Instructor Thomas. He's likely the only person who knows for sure. Okay, are we on four now? Part of the message tells of the hidden graves. The legend debates dates back 250 years ago and said many who died in the War of the Lions lie beneath this academy. More specifically, their bodies are buried directly below what is now the field. Whoa, is there more to this story? Oh, there most certainly is. They say that on some cursed nights, the corpses of the bur buried rise from the graves to bathe in the moonlight. When they do, their long hand graves surface from the field, overturning it and leaving holes. Well, that explains why this mystery is called the Hidden Graves, at least. But honestly, I was kind of expecting the mystery to be a little creepier. Heh, <laughs> you must be getting used to these macabre mysteries now. Good. Wait, what do you mean by good? <laughs> Regardless, the best people to ask about the field would be the members of the writing club. I believe the club's Captain Lambert is home for the summer. Perhaps you should ask Paula instead. Okay, mystery number five. Sports club grudge is the topic of the fifth mystery. Given how hard the sports club's trains is not uncommon to hear something coming from their general direction, but some say that screams can be heard coming from something else dwelling in the gymnasium. The rumors say that those screams are a grudge of sorts, a manifestation of all the stress his sports club members face. This one seems a bit backwards to me. Working up a sweat should wash away your stress is not making a monster come out of them. Eh, only a select few would share that sentiment. Such ignorance of others' feelings might just lead you to an unfortunate end. end. Right. No matter. Maybe wise to ask the captain of the fencing club for the details of this mystery. I think her name is Friedel. Okay, six. Oh my. The six mystery surrounds the Crimson Devil of Lake Hell. Wow. Have you paid much attention to the pond beside the gymnasium? Some say that it has a direct connection to hell itself. More amazingly, they say a resident of hell, the Crimson Devil, shows up at the pond from time to time. Well, that's certainly something. Any word of what it looks like? Sadly, the only descriptor I've heard is that it has two massive claws. It might be best to ask someone who fishes there often if you wish to know more about this mystery. Do you know Kenneth? He's a first year in the Imperial Club Fishing Club. He's a noble, though he acts as though he's not. Nevertheless, he's the club's head. Perhaps he knows something. And then the seventh mystery. The seventh and final mystery is at the poltergeist in the upper class dormitory. To be frank, I have very little information about this one. But it seems as though furniture, cutlery, and the like are often found broken in the upper class dormitory. People are saying a poltergeist is responsible? So it seems. Considering the mess it seems to be making, I can only imagine that the dormitory's maids would know something. Perhaps you should ask them for information. And that's it. Oh, is the fishing club? Is the fishing fishing club up here? Oh, Imperial Fishing Club. Oh, he's not here. Jeez, okay, we got a little this this is the actually let's check what is the length on this quest? It's put as a short? Short. We have to go to seven different places.
Okay. Uh... Well, there probably should be some in the main building, actually. Can I on this floor? Okay, there's one on this floor. Oh yeah, this is the sculpture. Oh, it's really I'm pretty sure this girl is the head of the art club. Excuse me, could I have a minute of your time? No, I'm busy. But my ears work, so I can listen to whatever you have to yeah, whatever you have to say. Go ahead, say your business. Okay, I guess she's going to keep working while I talk. That's pretty impressive. Ash is looking into the Academy's seven mysteries, one of which is the art room's crying sculpture. You wouldn't have to know anything about cons condensation. Sorry? Like I said, it's condensation. You have no idea how many people have come in to ask about that. They're not tears, just condensation, water vapor in the air. Big words scare you. Who in the right mind would actually believe a sculpture could cry? I guess the world would never run out of idiots. I see. Is that it? Yeah, pretty much. Thank you for the information. It was nothing. Okay. Well, that was pointless. Well, maybe not pointless, but... Okay, uh, maybe Instructor Thomas will be on the roof. I keep the wrong button every time. Nope, that's just V. Actually, wait, what is V doing up there? Ify, what are you doing up there? Hmm, I wanted to cool off here, but it looks like it's gonna rain. What a drag. Really? But it's still sunny out right now. Just feeling I have. Sharon said the same thing when I was heading out. Now that I think about it. Jeez, I swear. She has like a sixth sense. Okay. Um. Courtyard. Okay, we have something out here. Ah. Kenna. Hey, Irene. Still fishing the good fish? I don't think that's how the saying goes, but I guess you could say that. There's actually something I was hoping to ask you about. Does the Crimson Devil of Lake Hell ring any bells? That's one of the Academy 7 big mysteries, right? It's the only one I know, at least. Seriously, though, did anyone really believe this place was connected to Hell? <laughs> probably not. Any idea what the Crimson Devil part's all about, though? That's probably a crayfish. You see them around here every so often. That must be it. What's a crayfish? Red thing kind of looks like a crab, even has two big claws, just like the devil's supposed to. I wouldn't be surprised if a crayfish inspired the whole thing. Yeah, especially when you put it like that. Thanks, Kenneth. Kind of. well, yeah, I guess this is a pretty quick, qu pretty easy quest. Library, gotta talk to Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas. Ah, oh, he's gonna be sent back forever. Green, my boy, what sorts of questions have your inquiring mind come up with today? If it happens, I'm looking into something for a fellow student. Do you mind knowing anything about a forbidden tome supposedly locked away in this library? A forbidden tome? My, what a fascinating idea. Just imagine if it con con contained details on the sac sacraments of the ancient Zemurian civilization. Or perhaps it could be a grimoire written by the Crossbellian alchemists of the Middle Ages. Wouldn't it be thrilling if one really existed? Yeah, it sure would. In other words, it doesn't. What exactly inspired you to ask about this imaginary tome? Well, I'm investigating the seven mysteries of the Academy. And one of them had to do with a book full of the world's greatest secrets hidden deep within this library. Ah, so that's what this is all about. This year's story is even more absurd than the one I heard last year, but I do believe I know what you're talking about. You do? The tome the story refers to is, in fact, a volume of how shall we put this gentleman special... Gentlemen's special interest literature. Seriously? At least the forbidden part is right, not because it's dangerous or anything, but because it's rather naughty. We tell you the boy you boys time after time not to try bring these sorts of things into the academy academy, but somebody always has to try. Well boys will be boys, I suppose this little tale started because we gathered the contraband here before we dispose of it. Well that's one way to do things. So if you happen to have a prize collection of your own, make sure to leave it under your mattress back home. Unless you want me to find it and share what you're, in, what you're into with Instructor Sarah and the rest of the faculty. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, anyway, there's nothing especially unusual or mysterious about this library, I'm afraid. You've made that abundantly clear. Thank you for your time, Instructor. Alright, so nothing really from him. Okay, where else do we have? We have... Oh, sure, we have the gymnasium and the writing club. That's 
Still on all seven though. I think she's the captain of the fencing club, right? Sorry to bother you, but I could ask you a question. Don't bother at all, ask away. As it all happens, I'm looking into the seven mysteries of the academy. Have you ever heard of the sports club... Sports club's grudge? Oh, sure, people have been talking about it since I was a first year, although I don't suppose it will gain much traction next year. Why is that? It's pretty simple, really. Those screams don't come from people, but the door that used to be here. It happened in a bad condition. It had been in bad condition for years and used to make these awful screeching noises. So I asked for a placement at the beginning of the month. Now everything is nice and quiet around here. Well, then that explains that. Thanks for the information. <laughs> You're very welcome. Well, that was. All right. We should make sure. Nothing. Okay. After we had the, we had the field. Do. Irene from Musa's class, right? That's right. Are you Paula from class 5, I assume? This might sound weird, but I'm currently looking into these mysteries surrounding the school. Have you heard the rumor that uh, they're calling the Hidden Graves? I have. That's the one about the dead rising from the graves on the field, right? Amber and I found a hole in the field a while back. The only thing that came out of it was an exam with a bad grade. Seriously? That yeah, seems like someone couldn't deal with getting a score that bad, so they tried to put their tests six reggae under. They didn't even bury it, though, just dug a hole and tossed it in. We filled it up since some one could have tripped. With a grade like that, you could say the only grave our culprit dog was his own. Yeah, that joke was so bad I couldn't even force myself to laugh. That aside, thanks for the info. That was a big help. Okay. What's left, though? We've looked at everything, right? And okay, let's go. Just go back. Let's just go back to the the park and, and Tristan see. I doubt there's anything. Actually, actually, oh no, no, they have the maze. That's right. Highbell from the Wind Orchestra. Oh, hey, what's up? I have a quick question for you. I'm trying to investigate the seven mysteries of the Academy. What have you heard about the haunted piano? Oh, that story. That's the one about a ghost playing the piano in an empty room, isn't it? Oh, so you do know it. What can you tell me about it? <laughs> so you want me to, to want to know the truth, huh? It turns out the ghost was me all along. Whoa, really? Yeah, calm down. I didn't mean that I'm actually a ghost. <laughs> the rumor started spreading because someone heard noises of what they thought was an empty room, but I'm pretty sure they stumbled along while I was tuning the piano. Really? Yeah, it's not exactly rare to end up totally obscured from view when you're tuning certain parts of it. Change rather whoever heard that at the time just couldn't see me. So basically, I'm your so-called ghost. <laughs> that makes sense. Right? Sorry though, you are probably hoping for something of a bit more exciting. Not at all, huh? You told me just what I need to hear. Beryl might not be thrilled though. Thanks for your time. Not a problem. What happened to his arm, though? Poor guy. Oh, hey, Elliot. Oh, Reed, you made it. Hey, Elliot, you're looking kind of nervous. Yeah. Is it that easy to tell? There are quite a few people here, so I can't really help it, especially since I'm the lead by Linus now because of Havel's ac accident. I can totally understand why you're nervous, then. Good luck. Thanks. You'd probably be glad if I stayed. Okay, yeah, we'll say for Elliot. There's still some time left before you're on, right? Let's try a little before then, it might calm your nerves. Haha, uh -huh, thanks, Rain. Really appreciate it. Elliot, sorry, turning his violin before the performance began. Oh, we actually get to see it. That should do it. All that's left is now is to wait until it starts. Not long now. You're looking pretty confident, though. Huh? Well, I mean, I can tell you're nervous, but. You look focused, like you've just had a big distraction taken off your mind. Hmm, you're probably right. I think that's thanks to last month's field study. Now that you mention it, a lot of good things happened to me while we were back in Heimdall. I don't know if that actually caught that. My game just froze. I got to meet my friends who ended up attending the music, ac music academy, and I got to talk to you all about everything. I finally had the confidence I need to stop running for my love of music. But I never would have gained that confidence if it weren't for all of you. 
<laughs> you really are tough, aren't you? Good luck out there, Elliot. I'll be cheering you on with the rest of the audience. Just you wait. We're going to put on the kind of show you'll tell your grandkids about. Nice. Are we actually get to watch it? So it began the Wind Orchestra's performance. Elliot and the rest of the Wind Orchestra played passionately, pouring all they had into every note. That passion captured the hearts of all who were present, and the performance was deemed a resounding success. Nice, Elliot. My boy. 500. Nice. Knowing you're over here listening definitely helped me play my best. I'd even go so far as to say I pulled off a performance on par with what my friends at the Academy could give. I'll say... I was really impressed. Looking forward to hearing more music like that in the future. Thanks, Rain. I won't let you down. Nice. That was honestly an accidental uh, bonding point. I mean, oh, we had four? Oh, oh, yeah, we definitely could have used it then. All right. Uh, I think we just had the one with the maids, right? I think that's the last. I think that's the last one. Can't think of a better person to talk about. Ask about their best one. Excuse me. Would you mind if I asked you a question? Of course not. How can I help you? So I'm guessing the seven mysteries of the academy. There's one story about a polter poltergeist in the dorm. What would you know if there's any truth to that? Yeah, I do. In fact, some of the more experienced maids told me about it. I've even seen it for myself. So you've actually seen the poltergeist? No, not not quite. There was a much simpler explanation behind all the havoc. A clumsy maid who just keeps falling. The story goes: plates are broken and utensils thrown about the kitchen. Correct. These things happen when girls try their hands at cooking for the first time. The kitchen gets very chaotic. This sends ahead its peak in May when more of them want to practice for their cooking classes. But I think a poltergeist makes for a far more interesting culprit when people are sharing stories. Ah, that explains it. Thanks for clearing everything up. I'm glad I could help. That's the seventh mystery elucidated. Then none of them turned out as spooky as I'd hoped, but oh well. Hope Barrow won't be too disappointed. Well, let's go back and get over the news. Wait, oh, I missed it. Oh, Up the stairs, yeet. And, well, Barrel. That looks like you finished your investigation. Can you tell me what you've learned? So let's go with them one by one. I see. Condensation magazine, a test. None of these are supernatural at all. I honestly didn't expect any of them to be real, but the truth is even more pathetic than I thought it'd be. <laughs> I agree, although it's kind of interesting that people were able to make such fan fantastical movies. So yes, it was like fantasy. Fantastical stories out of perfectly ordinary things. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Still, I'd like to thank you for looking into everything for me. So here you go. Something hexed with one of my favorite curses. Ooh, nightmare. F thanks. I'll tell you the truth, I'm a little surprised none of the mysteries had anything to do with the old schoolhouse. It seems like the perfect setting for a good ghost story. I wonder why it didn't come up. I mean, we already know there are strange monsters in there. Huh, what are you talking about? Of course it comes up. And the real seven mysteries, at least. Real? What? Can you say that again? I didn't quite make them out. Yeah, I didn't say a word. Perhaps our your investigation has gotten to you. I could just want to hear her say something about the real seven mysteries. Oh, well, it's probably a better idea not to get into it. Yeah. Really, no. Alright. Let's do the orbital bike. Or do I want to do bonding points now? I will do orbital bike first, then we'll do the bonding points, and then we'll do the old school house. Uh, actually, let's, we'll talk to Angie. I like Angie. Well, I mean, it'll probably start the whole thing. Well, here you are. Hi, Rain. Thanks for coming. Oh, hey, Toa. What brings you here? I needed a little break from work, so I came along to help George and Angie. We asked her to come and help out with the request we sent you. So she's working on the bike, too? Yep, the request is pretty much the same as last time. Oh, so he's going to be riding it with her in the sidecar. <laughs> Lucky different this time. We'd like you to ride with Toa at your side. 
by my side. Don't you mean behind me? Huh, maybe it would be easier to just show you what we're talking about. I believe it's time for the grand reveal. Yeah, they had a sidecar. Wow, that was quick. Electric looks awesome. Whoa. Impressive, isn't it? We call this the sidecar. Much like the bike itself, this was a Ruar Institute of Technology prototype that George put the finishing touches on. You can probably tell, but the sidecar lets peop other people ride along with you. Though it's much closer to riding it in an Orwell it's much closer to riding in an Orwell car than it is like being on a second bike. That's pretty interesting. So you want me to do a test ride while Toa sits in the sidecar? Yep. That means I'm in your carrying. Try not to crash or anything. Right. I'll make sure everything goes smoothly and safely. Oh, don't worry about that. George and I have already done all that necessary safety test. The goal of this test is to get a fresh perspective, just like last time. That's right. Be sure to give us as much feedback as you can. That goes for you too, Toa. Okay. So, do you have the time to go for a ride? Hmm. Sorry, Rain. I'm always keeping you so busy. Oh, don't worry about it. How about you, though? Do you have some? Do you have time? You seemed pretty busy yesterday. <laughs> Thanks for worrying, but I'm fine. I got most of the hard, harder work sorted out yesterday, which means I've got time to spare today. As you can see, George and I are ready to go whenever you are. We'll work at your schedule to, to your schedule today. Thank you. Well then, yeah, we'll do it. Why don't we get started right away? Great. Let's get everything set up then. We're doing this on the nearby highway, aren't we? Yep, same as same one we tested the bike on last time. Going on a little date here. Not really. She looks so small sitting in that. So how does it feel to be in the sidecar, Toa? <laughs> it's exciting, but I'm a little nervous too. Knowing Green will be driving, uh, knowing Green will be driving puts me at ease though. Haha, <laughs> thanks. Oh, Toa, please don't say things that will make me envious like that. Oh, I have no choice but to send Green home and ride ride with you myself. <laughs> Sorry to cut you short here, Angie, but I can't let you do that. Remember, we chose these two for a reason. Ugh. <laughs> Same test as last time, right? Starting to ride, shifting gears, and coming to a stop? Did the sidecar change things at all? Ahem. Ahem. Actually, yes. The main changes are the increase in the weight and a different center of gravity. Those two things will have a huge impact on how the bike operates. I recommend you approach this as a whole new experience because it's definitely going to feel like one. I never would have guessed. Okay. That. What will I have to do? Basically, when sidecar is attached, you end up veering off towards its direction while you're accelerating. By the same token, when you're slowing down, you end up veering off in the opposite direction. Which just changes things a little. Which changes things a little for your test. Start to move will pull the handlebar to the left to make sure you turn it slightly to the right in advance to compensate. Next up, when you're shifting gears, you'll need to turn the handlebar slightly to the left when, you're dis when you dis disengage the clutch. Same goes for bringing her to a stop, but the extra weight means she's going to be hard to slow down, so be sure to hit the brakes earlier than you did last time. Will do. It's like a whole different set of rules. It really is, but you should be fine if you pay attention to what you're doing. My advice for you, Toa, is to believe in Rain and focus entirely on enjoying yourself. I think you have a wonderful time if you do. Second it. That should help motivate Rain too. How so? Well, thank. Well, think about it. I'll be happy knowing you're having fun, and I won't want to make any mistakes and ruin that. Oh, that's so sweet. Well then, here's hoping this will be fun for both of us. That's the hope. Let's not die. All right, going to start up the engine now. Huh, this is all so exciting. Okay, get ready. So I should start turning the handlebar. Uh, start moving. Start moving. Turn the handlebar to the right. There we go. Whew, thought I didn't mess that up. Huh, that was really smooth. Off they go. Yeah, it should be fun to talk to them when they get back. No seatbelt. So how is it? Does it feel different from when you rode alone? It definitely does. Angelica was right when she said it would handle completely differently. And that's not the only thing. Uh, what else is there? Uh, nothing. I was thinking of something else. 
Flash and Tara that the excitement of riding with her is a bigger hurdle than the sidecar. <laughs> Okay, I think we're both used to this speed by now. Are you ready to get a bit faster? Sure. Alright, let's switch gears. Which way do I have to turn this high bar when it's pushing again? Uh. Right. I think I have a disability question. I'll slide to the right. Just like we drove off. I did it wrong. Sorry, are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. How about you? Nothing broken but my pride. I guess I didn't think about how the sidecar would affect, like, would affect things. Actually, yeah, it makes sense it was to the left. I did it backwards. Ah, it doesn't seem tough to manage. You don't have to force yourself to, to do things so quickly if you're not confident, okay? Just take it one step at a time. I will. That was embarrassing. Yeah, I'm bad. Don't worry about it. Yo. It really does feel nice, doesn't it? The view from here is great. It's great, too. It's a much more refreshing experience than I expected it would be. We're not wearing helmets if we crash for dead. Having you here with me makes it a lot more fun too. <laughs> Aw, thanks. Okay, then I guess we're about done. It's almost time for us to turn back. Let's let to slow down a bit. Okie dokie, sounds like it's time for the final test. And we said to actually wait for the sidecar to so take a look at the approach to slowing down. Take our break earlier. It takes longer we can come to a stop with the extra weight, so we should put the brakes on earlier than usual. Well, that was an easy one. There we go, stop it just in the right spot. I know you could do it. Thank you, Rain, I had so much fun. And we still have the journey back to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear it. I'm gonna take a little break before we go back then. Sounds good to me. Oh, yeah, we made it back. I love how th it has three exhaust pipes. <laughs> Seems that things went well. Enough for both of you. I'm impressed you could handle her at all with such different hardware than the last time we rode. Thanks, I get the feeling I could have done better though. Really appreciate your help too, Toa. Feel like you ended up having a pretty good time at least. I did. It was a lot easier to just sit back and enjoy myself than I thought. Of course, that's all thanks to Rain. Uh huh, not at all. The fact that you trusted in me and were able to enjoy yourself kept me focused on doing a good job. Well, I always trusted in you, so say it wasn't anything special. It's nice to hear you say that though. It tears my soul to say it, but you two make for a good pair. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Well then, that finishes up the test. Let's head back to the engineering building. Is Toa actually a potential interest or no? I'm not even sure. Could be. Thank you both for all the for the all the great data. Your feedback should come in handy when I'm tuning the tuning the thing. I'm always glad to help. You're planning on enter uh, entering that data into the computer, right? Would you like me to help you organize all that? Really? That'd be a big help, but are you sure you have the time? Aren't you busy with your preparations for the trade conference? Wait, Toa's going to the trade conference? Ah, uh, right, I haven't told you yet, have I? Truth is, the Imperial government requests I go along to help out the major players. As such, I'll be heading to Crossbell for the trade conference as an assistant to the Entourage. The, the Entourage? Attend the Empire's representative during the meeting, right? And you're assisting them? Yeah, it'll mainly involve helping out with paperwork and scheduling, I imagine. I don't think I'll be much help, to be honest. But the government did ask. Toa has received a ton of job offers from all over the country lately. Everyone's just waiting to get for, for on her to graduate. The trade conference invite is the government's attempt to sweeten the deal. Unbelievable. Does that mean you're planning on moving into the government work instead of the military? No, I still haven't decided yet. I'm kind of doing this just to broaden my horizons. And apparently all this is because of the trouble in Heimdall last month. The government took a real interest in how quickly and effectively, efficiently she evacuated all the citizens. That explains it. <laughs> I was like class 7 ended up doing a lot more work than I could ever have. I even had help from Angie and Crow too. Even then, it was thanks to your instruction that we were able to split up and handle everything so effect efficiently. If you did decide to enter the military, I think you'd make a splendid commander. They had a uniform small enough to fit her, at least. <laughs> hey, no teasing allowed. <laughs> Either way, best of luck. 
I'm sure we'll be in the middle of another field study by then, but I'll be praying that things go well for you. So thanks, Reen. Whoa, 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 this is starting to look way too much like a sappy Ten Mira novella. <laughs> Let me just step right in here and keep you two from stumbling into a badly written fantasy. What kind of novellas are you reading? Is it something I said? Now, now, asking questions will only encourage her. To change the subject before she gets out of hand, thanks for helping us test out the bike out again. This is for you. Ooh, volcanic rain. Nice. Haha, <laughs> just glad to help. <laughs> See you later, Ten Rain. Good luck investigating the old schoolhouse, too. Au revoir. You'll be the first person we ask if we need any more help. Yeah, boom. Hello, Reen Schwarzer of Class 7 speaking. It's Sarah. You knocking out those requests from the student council? Yeah, I've made out my way through several of them now, and I'm just getting started on the rest. Nice, I've got something to talk to you about, so come along to the factory lounge when you can. I'm not going to take it out take it out on your grades if you don't show up or anything. It's just a personal thing. Later. Don't even wait to hear my response. Oh well, I suppose I should go meet her in the factory lounge when I get a chance. Fine, Sarah will do that first. Where's the main building? Oh, I'm derpy. Back to the lounge, first floor, right. Left and right. Yay. Wait, get through the door. Oh, there's Sarah. Ah, oh, there you are. Seems like everything is going smoothly with the student council. For the most part, yeah. Ah, oh, glad to hear it. I'm almost finished with another day's boring paperwork here. Want to skip this joint and head into town? You can treat me to a couple beers for being such a dedicated teacher. Yeah, for some reason I see the school frowning on that. <laughs> you never cease to entertain me. So Nineheart let it slip that he gave you guys some kind of special training last month. Wait, what are you? Oh, uh, you must mean those swimming lessons. Exactly. Exactly. I've been pretty pleased at how much all the guys have been improving their times. And then boom, I find out it's all because of Nineheart's meddling. I'm still fuming to even know how much crow I was eating when he bragged right to my face. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Wait. Okay. What's the deal with those two? It's like they're locked in some mortal struggle to undo each other. Well, if that's how he wants to play it, the gloves are coming off. I'm going to hold special girls-only lessons. And you're just the man who's going to help me out. What? But you just said it was girls-only. But I need you, Reen. I need you to tell me all the juicy details about what Nightheart's been drilling you on. So you're free now, right? Uh, yes. I almost forget saying it, but I am. Splendid, let's tear off our clothes and get into our swimsuits. I've got to grab the girls and tell them to meet me at the gymnasium. <laughs> oh no, swimming lessons MK2 started. Great. Great. <laughs> it's almost a stair step down. Million being the shortest and it just goes up. Actually, well, to be fair, I'm and Elisa about the same height. So what sort of training will we be doing here? hasn't escaped my notice that only us girls are here too. What sort of training indeed. I'm more, about, I'm, more, I'm more worried about the wandering gaze of a certain boy in our midst. Well, things happen. Listen up, Instructor Reen here is going to tell us about all ab about the secret training Nineheart decided to give the guys. Do you know he exactly... Did you know he actually held a special workshop just for them? Doesn't it burn you up that none of you were included? Not really knowing him, it was probably just needless exertion. Yeah, I totally get what you mean. He seems like the kind of guy who who likes boring monologues and macho training sessions and that sort of stuff. Her eyes, when she does that, it's kind of scary. Oh, uh, what'd you tell us? Of, why didn't? Why don't you tell us how you really feel? All right, let's start with this so-called manway method of his. What does that involve exactly? Ooh, that exactly actually sounds pretty cool. The general idea behind the memory method is that people put more effort into things when they can beat other people at them. First up, we'll have Rain. Uh, we'll have Rain, the mean machine, show us how it's done. Go ahead and choose who you want to square off with. You know, just Rain is fine, really. Okay, I'm stuck here anyway. Might as well make the most of it. I can pick Sarah? Ooh, I was thinking about doing Laura. Because if I beat Laura, that would be a great accomplishment. But I kind of want to do Sarah too. Mm. Oh, I can't go back either. I can't save. We'll do Laura. 
You're a great swimmer, Laura. Would you mind going first? I'd be hoping for the opportunity to have a proper match with you. I accept. Ooh, I do smell the flames of competition. Let's throw some fuel on that fire. Sound like something Sarah would say. Ready and go. I am going to fail this probably 20 times because it's Laura. I really wanted to pick Sarah, but I think Laura would be a better target. Or better target person to pick. Alright, so Y and B. I'm a little rusty, kid. Yes, I know how to do this. Circles overlap. Alright, here we go. I didn't fail a single one. Let's go! First try, boys. I've gotten so good at that. Hand-eye coordination. Or thumb-eye coordination, because I'm just using my thumb to press Y and B on the controller. Booyah! We did it. So can we beat Laura, though. Unbelievable. I never realized you were really this strong of a swimmer, Reen. That might have been a fluke. Yeesh. I have seen you swim before on your good days. You leave me eating your wake. Fluke or no, you scored a win on that one. Anyway, get back over here. We're not done yet. Not even close. Well, yeah. Hey, our link leveled up. Nice. Powerful strike. Vengeance. Ooh. Okay. So what did Nighthorn have you guys do after this? Well, the first part was having us all go head to head like we just like we did just now. For that, he pushed us to our limit, swimming the length of the pool with just 30 seconds of rest between laps. In terms of distance, I'll bet we ended up swimming well over 5,000 arch. Th that's crazy. Now that's what I call a long distance swim. That sounds about right for a regular training session. Or maybe for you, Laura. Bleh, the distance doesn't really bother me. I just don't want to swim laps back and forth. Boo-ring. How about we play tag? <laughs> oh, I'm up for it if the rest of you are. <laughs> sounds fun. I'm not opposed to the idea. Tag? Yeah, I just hope so I'm certain someone doesn't use fun and games as she used to get all grabby. Oh my gosh. Relax, this is me you're talking about, not Crow. I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, looks like everyone's up for arousing a game of tag. Woohoo! I'll be, I'll be it first. Are you serious? And that's how a grooming training session developed into pool games. Fortunately, poor Rain, his hands did end in the wrong place the wrong time once or twice, earning him everlasting shame. However, he nobly pers persevered, and so it was their no noble training they came to an end. Whoa, from such guys, thanks for helping. Okay, well, we finished it. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. And now... Okay. So, we still have three of these left? Alright. Okay, so I have three left. Alright, I've done with one with... Actually, wait, I'm just in the... Okay, is Laura in here? No. If she's in the... Is she in the... Swim? Is she here? Uh, okay, I don't particularly want to... Wait for I can look and see what it is. But it's, more, it's more swimming stuff, though. Monica's been making great strides with her swimming lately. She may even reach her goal of swimming 50 yards today. <laughs> Seeing her push herself like that every day makes me proud to be one of when I coached her. Glad to hear it. Been back to usual self ever since our field study in Heimdall. Hmm, something to matter. Nah, everything's fine, haha. Huh? Should I try to help her out? Eh, not right now. We just did a bunch of we just did swimming stuff. And beat her in a race. I'm gonna do Crow first, then Emma, and then Elisa. Gotta save Elisa for last. Oh, I went the wrong way. All right, Crow, my man, where are you at? Oh, there you are, bud. Hey, what are you doing here, Crow? Oh, yo, Reen, I left something here yesterday, so I just came to pick it up. Though, man, I'm always forgot how much of a pain moving is until you have to do it again. This is why I wanted to use my old room to just store stuff in. I wouldn't push your luck with that. He seems like he needs the help. Yeah, we'll help him out. I don't mind giving you a hand. It looks like you need it. Are you serious? Man, I guess you're the... You were right when they said you can't beat having a loyal first year at your at your beck and call. Oh, just to make it clear, this is unpaid labor, I'm afraid. Don't worry, I wasn't expecting payment from the guy who conned, conned 50 Mira off me. <laughs> That's true. Very true. 
Yo. Ah, oh, hey there. What's up, Crow? What's this I hear about being, you being a first year again? I hear I heard worse. Did they kick you out already? Come on, you guys. Come on, you guys know nobody would ever want to get rid of me. Show a little respect to the guy teetering on the edge of his second first year. Haha, <laughs> you've only got yourself to blame for that. So I'm guessing this guy is a first year in your new class, Crow? Yes, I'm from class 7. Well, how about that? Let me see you a Let me give you a little tip. Never drop your guard around this guy. Because he'll be in your pockets the second you do. Hey, hey, now. We don't want to give my new classmate here the wrong impression. <laughs> Trust me, I've got all the impressions I need by now. This is ridiculous, Crow. Shut up and give me a hand here. This thing isn't going to carry itself. <sighs> you can at least ask nicely. Alright, let's go get the rest of the crew to help us out with this. Huh? What are they trying to carry? That? That should about do it. Thanks for the help, guys. Don't sweat it. Just make sure you get paid back. Pay back that money you owe me. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> In that case, we'll leave you to it. Thank you for your help. Seconds left the room. They left in a hurry. Ah, well. Wouldn't have been able to move all that on my own anyway, so I'll let it slide this time. Surprised you got so many people to show up to help. You really do have a lot of friends, don't you? Well, I've been here for two years now, right? Keep it up, and one day you might as be famous as Old Crow here. <laughs> I get the feeling that in order to be that popular, I need to be old crow. Alright then. Now that you've got your furniture, I'll say it once again. Welcome to the Class 7 Dormitory. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Level 3. Good. Cover counterattack. Nice. Be fair, when we came in the last time, all his stuff was already situated, so that's kind of funny. Alright, we got Courtyard, we got Emma up next. Hey Emma, what brings you here? Oh, Ren, you wouldn't happen to have seen Celine anywhere, would you? I've been searching all over for her. Celine? That's her cat, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't exactly call her my cat. She was with me just a little while ago. But then she bolted off like something caught her interest. Huh, I haven't seen her around. At least, not recently. Well, I probably shouldn't be too worried about it. She's the capricious sort, not unlike Milliam. I suppose she must have run off to have a little cat adventure somewhere. There, should help her look for Selene. Yeah, I would. How about I help you look for her? After all, two pairs of eyes are better than one, right? Are you sure? Well then, thank you for the volunteering. Two so, then began the search for Selene. They searched high and low, checking areas where Emma felt Selene might may be, and relying on Rain's power of detection. However, no matter how hard they looked on campus, they could find no trace of her. I think we're going to have to start looking in town. That should take up even more of your time. Don't worry about it. We'll keep looking with you until we find her. Hopefully, she really is in town. Fairly confident that she hasn't gone any somewhere else, at least. But we should still try to find her as soon as we can. Uh, agreed. You seem a lot more worried about her than you let on earlier, though. I guess you were just trying to convince yourself not to panic. <laughs> Sometimes like that. Something like that. I do think of her as a friend after all. Right, let's start looking around. We're gonna find this cat. Nope. Nope. <sighs> She's not making this easy. Indeed. Just where has she run off to? Sling? Could it be? Oh. Oh? Is that? on a roof or something? Oh, there she is. Selena, just, so this is where you are. Why turn off like that all of a sudden? So she's eating something. Seems like it. Huh. Are these sardines? Sardines? They're small dried fish that are usually used in the east. Mostly to make broth. Guess cats really like them too. Maybe... Mitch... I'm saying Mitch. Mitch ordered a few and gave her a couple as a snack. Wow. Whew. You really gave me a fright vanishing like that, Celine. 
For a moment I thought those two had... Those two. No, no, nothing. It's nothing. I'm thank you for helping me, Reed. I don't know like what I've done without you. Ah, uh, happy we found her. That wasn't very nice though, Celine. Emma was really worried about you. <laughs> Celine, there's no need to be rude. Huh, cats will be cats. Just give me a shout if you ever need help with anything else, Emma. Of course. Uh. 